All right, guys, we're to the Rover Land. This is probably one of my favorite builds that we've done. We just wanted to have fun with it, so we got a lot to talk about here, so we're just going to kind of get through it. On the front end, CBI sent us over one of their Tundra front bumpers. So as you'll notice, we like to screw it. Uh, we took off the Tundra front end. So this is actually the first truck we did it on, too. So this is the first test fit. Yeah, just yesterday, we got these Alpha X lights installed. They're still a prototype kit, but they're working, and we're getting it in there. I'll, I'll pop it on here for you. Let's see if we'll get it to come on. Check that out. They do some more functions too, but we're still kind of figuring out how to play with them. Um, on the CBI bumper, we actually hacked off the actual bars that go across. Didn't really want to do it. We wanted a super clean look to it, so we did cut them off like within five minutes of me in the shop uh for lighting diode through the kitchen sink at it so we have ss2 pros ssc2 pros ss3 pros um all in amber down there with the back lighting we have their 30 inch light bar here their 18 inch grill light bar in here and obviously it's powered by a switch pro on the hood we have a solar panel from cascadia 4x4 this is a 85 watt solar panel that is just hooked up hooked up straight to the starting battery. These are super cool because it blocks a lot of the sun. <laughs> it blocks a lot of the sun from the glare in your eyes, but also you're charging your battery at the same time. So let me actually pop the hood for you too. Do it. So this is what took the longest to build out of this entire truck. The bumpers were cool. They were fast, everything like that. What really took the most time, it took me about three days of wiring to get this in here. So here's the RCR Force 12 from Switch Pro. There is so many different configurations you can do. I won't bore you with all that. But the cool part that I'm actually like really happy about is everything that's powered by the Switch Pro through the whole truck for the bed, we'll get to the back end, but everything is powered through these two connectors right here. If we ever have any diagnosis or we want to change something around, it's just a quick plug and unplug and we're set to go. Super cool system. As you can see, it's actually a pretty clean system here. Um, SEHQ actually makes this battery hold down. Um, it not only does it hold your battery down, but also you have provisions to mount Red Arc BC DC chargers, or in our case, just attach all of your connections there. It's pretty much it from under the hood. It's a bone stock truck, other than that. Um, getting to, let's go around this side. Getting to the wheels, there's not one here because we got hooked up with Power Brake, and these are the big brake kits for the Tundras. They're a two-piece uh, two piece rotor design, and if you look right up on top of here, we'll have some more videos on it, but there's actually heat marking paint on there, so they can track where your heat level is, and if they need to bump you up to a bigger rotor or a more different set of pads, they track everything. It's all on the same thing, same thing on the caliper. They have heat marking tape back here. These things stop like a dime. We towed our 14,000 pound trailer here with this where we were trying to, and the trailer brakes weren't working on the trailer side of it, and he's, this thing's still stopping. They're awesome. For suspension, we have the Dobbinson's the new IMS kit. This is the first IMS kit that we could even get from Dobbinson, and we just immediately threw it on. Um, paired up with the uh, Icon Delta Joint upper control arms. It's a great combo. This is holding the weight that we needed to do really, really well, but also still having plenty of soft ride, and it, it just handles great. Again, Dobbinson's, Iron Man, all of these companies, they're great stuff because we don't have to warranty them. They ride good, and the people that actually sell them to you are super knowledgeable. So this has been really cool to do here. We did actually cut out the body mount down in here to fit the 37 inch tires, which we'll get to here in a second. But this has been a fun truck. On the side, we have the CBI sliders. Those just showed up just the other day too. We got those slapped on, super awesome bolt-on kits. We don't like to do weld on. So anything bolt-on for sliders was awesome. Don't forget the grab handle. Oh yeah. We got a grab handle from Front Runner. This is the new Front Runner Slim Sport roof rack for the Tundra. Tony, are these even like these are just released, aren't they? The grab handle is brand new. No, the the Slim Sport. That's the new that's the Tundra, so that's the Second one in America. You heard from Tony so himself. So here's the deal. <laughs> Every time we do a 22 Tundra build, everybody's like, "Hey, let's let's get something on here." So Tony at Front Runner last year air freighted a slim uh, slimline two roof rack first one in the world actually not in the world right first one in america, yeah, north america yeah. first one in north america yeah. and so this go around you know front runners coming in hanging out in the booth and tony's like we got to get a slim sport on there and yet again 
one day before the show, we have. <laughs> so the thing I love about the Slim Sports, so the Slimline 2, I'm going to pop in real quick. Go the Slimline is what we have on the Tacoma and a lot of other vehicles that you guys have seen. But the Slim Sport I love, especially as far as the theme of this build, is because the contour of it to the face, you know, a little bit more lower profile. You get all the same, you know, modular aspects you get with their other racks, every single attachment. Um, but as far as the overall fit of it, it's a little bit less of the exhibition style look, uh, but it doesn't lose any of its modular capabilities. Plus it has a sick grab handle. Look yes. at it. Sick grab handle, obviously. But grab handle is yeah. rack but went on great, so the highlight of that rack is a truly extruded crossbar. So it, and it's M8 hardware throughout, so it's it's off-road ready, you know, built strong. All of our accessories run across that platform as well as Slimline too. So yeah, accessorize galore. Have at it. That's why we like front runner. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah. And everything we want to attach to is right there. And I told him, do you guys make thousands of accessories that bolt directly up to it? Yeah, it's great stuff. Expose C channel from the side too. That's huge. You don't have to take the, the side panel off. You can get right in there with your. I did notice that. It's Quick and easy. so handy. It only took me like five minutes to put this grab handle on. Mike knows. Not even. Yeah. Not even. It was just, it was cake work. No, they haven't. Um, we actually glossed over this. Um, these are the bad dynamics. Uh, ditch light brackets with their SS2s, the pros again, on here, and we got our Midland radio. I haven't really talked about them a whole lot, even though they're in every single one of these vehicles. Midland's great. This is their ghost antenna, just mounted on these brackets here. Uh, let's get into the interior just a little bit. It's a mess, guys. We're not, we, we just got here yesterday. SDHQ made this uh, Switch Pro mount that goes straight to the dash. It's super clean. We did the Force 12, and they actually give you a little round ball support here, too, so you can hang your phone, you can hang whatever you want. Another cool thing about this. So if you are driving and you don't want your radio, just take it out and put it in your glove box. If you want to hook up your radio, boom, you're hooked up. Factory style switch. That's from Steady Australia, actually. Um, well, I won't bore you with the rest of the stuff inside because it's a mess. On the back end, we have this smart top. Again, all of this stuff came in, no joke, two days before we got here. So Theo overnighted this to us, got it set on there. And then of course we left front runner, so we had to put a front runner on top of the smart top. That's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. I actually argued we should put a third one on there, just just because. Um, again, we paired up some diodynamic lights all over it. Uh, we can control all that with the Switch Pro, Bluetooth wise. Mike has my phone, otherwise I'd show you. Um, but we can put up to it, turn them on side side back, whatever you want to do. It's just all right there. Um, coolest thing about the Smart Top. It's very hard. You can step on that. You can put tons of weight on it, and it is locked. <laughs> So we'll demonstrate that later on. But this whole thing just lifts straight up and you have a truck bed again. You can throw whatever you want in there, shut it back down and you're good to go. Now we can't miss the CBI high clearance bumper. Honestly, my favorite bumper for the 22 tonner so far, the rear bumper. The cuts are odd looking, but they're so cool. It, it's super high clearance. We cut a lot of the back end of this truck off. Um, they use some of your sensors back here. They're all hidden. They look tough. You don't have to see them. We've got our Diodynamics rear reverse lights. We just pop those on whenever you're going to see in the back. And the cool thing is, they actually left the factory lights right here. It's a super clean design. You got your trailer hookups, all that stuff. But super cool bumper. It's not near as heavy as you think it would be. Um, really cool, easy install. It was great. Um, for the rears, obviously, you guys know that the Tundras are coil spring rear ends now, the new ones. We went to Dobinson's. We are actually using their old Land Cruiser springs that fit in there, but now Dobinson's actually has their springs out there that are specifically designed for the Tundra. These are rated to hold. These are rated to hold up to, I think we put the 600 pound rear springs in here. I can't remember the exact number. David might be able to help us out with that. So the rear coils that, um, that we've used for the heaviest weight is a C40, uh, C59 A45, which is rated six to 800 pounds of constant load. Um, that we were using 80 series uh, coils for these vehicles because they fit right in, but we actually dialed in a softer spring rate for the actual Tundra coils. Uh, it rides much better, it's a bearable rate as well. Um, do you want me to talk about the front shocks a little bit? Yeah, well? go for it. Okay. So this one has our IMS shock model, which is a IFP design monotube. Um, it's 2.6 inch body with a 60 uh, millimeter piston, so it's a really big body. Um, you got the lower leg, you got the adjusters, so you can preload a little bit. We need that for fine tuning, because we always want the lift to come from our coil. Being IFS, you never want to overlift and compromise your down travel. Um, 
This one has our coils that are rated for the bumper and winch. Uh, so it gives you, we run two inch or three inch in the front. You could preload if you want to get to like two and a half or three and a half. Um, but once you start creeping into three and a half, you start to lose a little bit of that down trouble. On the rear, we have the same IMS model, which is also 2.6 inch bodies, really big 60 millimeter pistons. And these shocks are fully rebuildable and revalable. That's really good for us because as much as we take time to valve them to the way that we like the ride and we think that it's best, um, if somebody's ever overweight with a lot of weight or they just want it extremely flush, they can send them into us and we can revalve them for them. And also they're fully rebuildable too. So if you ever need to uh, do service on your shocks or you ever have a leak or whatnot, after using them for an extensive time, we can actually rebuild them for you uh, at our facility. Yeah. That's it's sick. Good. It's good stuff, man. The variable rate coils yeah. are the best. I sell them all the time because they ride really soft, yeah. even though you're holding a ton of weight. Yeah. So we do it all the time. Like all, any any kind of coil spring that I'm doing, I always go at the top of the variable rate. They're also, the one, another thing to point out, the rear, we offer one inch and two inches of lift, but we also offer two models of shock. We offer one that's extended travel and one that's long travel. This one's running our long travel, so you do have ex uh, run extended brake lines and extended bump stops a bit, but it is right now, I think, the longest shock available for this platform. This wicked. We love it. It's not even how, like weighted down to where we need it to be. We actually went a little overkill on the spring, so we thought yeah. we were going to tow our huge trailer. Yeah. We didn't end up towing it, but the ride quality is not compromised. Yeah. It still rides great. So, Dobbinson's, they're the way to go. We love them. Um, we actually glossed over the Method wheels. These are their new 707 B grip wheels. I think it's one of the coolest looking wheels that they've designed. Patrick from Method actually brought us these little Toyota caps right here too. They look, they just made it pop. Uh, we have these wrapped in 37, 12 and a half, 18s. Um, these are the Toyo Open Country RTs. Super great tire. We've actually, out of all the Tundras you guys have seen, we've had multiple Tundras. This tire has been on every single Tundra that we've had so far, just because we keep like keep using them. Um, yeah, but this, the, the B-Grip wheels, I, I joke about it. I thought it was really gimmicky when I first heard about them, but after getting them, we actually had to upgrade our wheel and tire machines to be able to properly dismount these tires. That B-Grip is no joke. It's awesome stuff. Um, uh, I think that's uh, just about it. We got one more thing to talk about over there. Over here, being a rubber lander, you gotta have cool gadgets and stuff. I don't even know how this works, honestly. But you got your cell phone antenna. You can't go camping without your cell phone. Is that the Wii Boost? This is the Wii Boost. That's the Wii Boost. This is the Wii Boost, the RV antenna. So, we all know if you're overlanding, you gotta have your cell phone, you gotta upload to Instagram, you gotta be able to do all that stuff. So, we wanted to make sure we always had cell phone. So, that is up there. Everything in the back when it comes to our wiring is again, all just ran through the Deutsch connectors. So we make all these in-house, custom wiring harnesses, we do all of this. So if we ever wanna take this off, it's one plug right here. And the whole back end comes off. Easy. Easy peasy. I think that just about covers it for the Broverlander. I'm sure there's more detail. Michael's gonna be doing tons of videos, so he'll go even further in depth with you on it, but that's the Broverlander.